Welcome to part 3 of lecture 20 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of, you know, is there an extra degree of freedom for the high pressure compressor because of, you know, a different temperature ratio appearing in the expression? The answer is no. All right, the, the high pressure compressor performance, again, only ultimately depends on T0 4 over T0 2. All right, so we have this equation at the top, and um, but we can use the low pressure shaft power balance to relate uh, T naught two three and T naught two, um, and that is in itself a function of T naught four over T naught two. But we can imagine putting this in, and at the end of the day, P naught three over P naught two will only depend on T naught four over T naught two. Okay, so enough of sort of theorizing. Let's go ahead and apply this approach to see how it works in practice. Um, so we'll apply this to the Concorde engines, the Rolls-Royce Olympus 593. Um, there's not that many two-shaft turbojet engines out there, so this is kind of a relatively rare example, so it's a perfect one for, for what we want to look at here. So because this is meant to fly around on the Concorde, um, which had a cruise Mach number of two, we can't have too high of an overall pressure ratio for the engine. So the, the, the value here is 11.3. And this is because even at the cruise altitude of 51,000 feet for this aircraft, the uh, stagnation temperature coming into the engine is 390 Kelvin. So the material properties really limit the maximum temperature that you can allow in the compressor. Right, so and this high Mach number basically yields a significant ram compression too. So P naught two over PA um, is 7.8. <laughs> So you know, you're getting a lot of compression just from the fact that you're flying around so fast. Now the mass flow through the engine is going to be set by the high pressure turbine inlet because the flow is going to be choked there. Right, basically the first choke component in the engine is what sets the whole mass flow. Um, and we want the non-dimensional mass flow into the engine, um, basically into the low pressure compressor. Um, so if we assume no pressure losses in the combustor, so then we know M bar four, um, then M bar two, if the same if it's the same physical mass flow, we can just be related through um, total temperature, specific heat area, and pressure ratios. So what this shows us is that the overall pressure ratio is a dominant factor in setting M bar two. Um, again, this is the same equation here in the middle of the slide, right? So, um, P naught three over P naught two, uh, of course, is a function of T naught four over T naught two, and the resulting variations in that pressure ratio are going to be a lot bigger than the variations in the square root of T naught four over T naught two that also appears in this equation. Um, so the overall pressure ratio is mostly what's going to set the engine non-dimensional mass flow. This is the same result that we got for a one-shaft engine. And then we could get the LP compressor working line by essentially plotting the locus of P naught two three over P naught two versus M bar two. For the high pressure compressor, the non-dimensional mass flow is set by the high pressure uh, pressure, uh, basically by the high pressure uh, shaft pressure ratio. Um, and so, from the same approach, we can get that M bar two three is again going to be related to M bar four. Um, and then the, the subscripts on the, the, the terms are just different. So basically the pressure ratio of the high pressure compressor, rather than that of the whole engine, is what sets this non-dimensional mass flow. So this means we get less variation in high pressure compressor, high pressure compressor operating condition than we do for the low pressure compressor, um, basically because it's got a lower governing pressure ratio. So then we basically can get the high pressure compressor working line from plotting loca a locus of P naught three over P naught two three versus M bar two three. So we can get the working lines for both compressors. Um, the engine engine mass flow varies sort of in the same way as for a single shaft engine, um, and we can roughly estimate that the shaft speed is going to vary linearly with mass flow. This tells us that the high pressure shaft speed variations are going to be small compared to those for the LP shaft because looking at the plot here, we can see that the, the range along the horizontal axis, um, that the, the high pressure turbine sort of ex, you know, has excursions. We're talking um, well, 83% of design up to about 100 and, uh, you know, 18, 115, 116% of design. 
Whereas the low pressure compressor, over the same um, sort of range of, of operating conditions, um, is, is going to be looking at you know, going from something like 60% to, um, to 175%. Right? So at the design point, which is cruise, um, the, the pressure uh, ratios of the two spools are matched to maximize the efficiency of the cycle. Um, but our takeoff condition um, for especially right for a turbo shaft engine, we should expect or a turbo jet engine, we should expect that we have to significantly have, uh, increase T not four over T not two for takeoff. Um, the low pressure compressor sort of uh, increases its mass, its non-dimensional mass flow by almost seventy five percent, whereas the high pressure compressor only increases it by about fifteen percent. Um, and uh, at this this T not four over T not two equals five point zero three condition. So. The high pressure shaft is going to see these much smaller variations in its operating points than does the, the low pressure shaft. Basically because this line is steeper. Now, we can conceptually use the same approach to look at what's happening with our high bypass ratio turbofan engines in terms of off-design matching. Now the simplest configuration for a turbofan engine would be to basically have the low pressure turbine only drive the fan. Um, that would make the analysis infinitely easier. Unfortunately, it's not what's ever done because the compressor pressure ratio would be too high. It'd be much greater than 20 and uh, we wouldn't be able to have significant stability or off-design performance. So in the two-shaft turbofan engine, we always include the booster, a booster on the LP shaft. Um, right? So we do some compression after the fan on the LP shaft uh, for the flow that's going into the core and that's what we call the booster. Um, and the same overall approach can be used as what we just used for the two shaft turbojet. Um, but the LP shaft consideration is a lot more complicated now because not all of the flow goes through the core. The core itself behaves essentially exactly the same as the uh, HP spool of the, the two shaft turbojet. Uh, right? We are gonna, are gonna take our high pressure turbine inlet to be choked. Um, and the LP turbine also to be choked. So if we assume constant polytropic efficiency, then the pressure or the temperature ratios across both turbines are again just fixed by geometry. Uh, sorry, of the high, for, for, not across both turbines, across the high pressure turbine are, are fixed by geometry. And then we can do high pressure shaft power balance and mass flow considerations in exactly the same way as for the turbojet, and we get exactly the same results. The low pressure system is much complicated by the unchoked nozzle at the end of the core flow. There's basically no operating condition where the core propulsive nozzle is going to be choked for a modern high bypass ratio engine. So since the fan pressure ratio is low, um, we're going to have low bypass jet velocities and we want similar velocities for the core and bypass. So because we've got a high temperature in the core, it means the Mach number has to be lower for a similar velocity, and that means that the nozzle pressure ratio must be less than that for choked, since choked, or, or Mach 1, is the highest possible Mach number we'll have for the bypass nozzle exit condition. So now, unfortunately, um, because it's unchoked, our nozzle non-dimensional mass flow is not a constant anymore. Um, instead, the non-dimensional mass flow at uh, the core nozzle at station 9 is a function of the pressure ratio there. Um, and the, this is the way in which it's, it's a function of the pressure ratio. Um, so this means that we're gonna have to clearly do some kind of iterative solution. The low pressure turbine pressure and temperature ratios then are also not just functions of geometry, but depend on M bar nine, um, which it itself is a function of P naught nine over PA. Again, this assumes constant efficiency. And the power production from the LP turbine um, per unit of core mass flow um, is going to be sort of a, a product of two factors, the first of which is going to be constant, and the second of which is going to be a function of the nozzle pressure ratio. Now, the bypass nozzle, as we've discussed several times, may or may not be choked. At cruise, in similar conditions, we would expect that bypass nozzle to be choked, but near takeoff, the bypass is always going to be unchoked for a modern uh, fan pressure ratio engine. 
So before we move on and discuss that further, um, let's sort of figure out, well, how fast do you have to be going before you hit choke? Right? So if we assume that we've got a fan pressure ratio of one and a half, um, I'd like you to determine what the flight Mach number needs to be to just choke the bypass nozzle. So take a couple of minutes and calculate this before you move on to the next part of the video and we'll also take it out during the tutorial.